Hi folks, welcome to the Bit Retro Journal. Um, this is the um, 1940s, late 1940s, uh, seven inch TV that I showed on my channel previously. And I, uh, I've been working on it and I actually uh, took it apart and cleaned it. Uh, so this had, um, if you go back and watch this video, um, I took the bezel off, which is uh, this piece right here. Um, and it's just a sort of a plastic front see-through with uh, some golden plastic um, and uh, that uh, the tube itself including the plastic had a I guess it was just like clay that was sort of stuck on the front of uh, of this or on the back of the screen uh, and on the uh, picture tube so I had to take it apart and, and really uh, carefully remove the clay it was very um, it had some adhesive on it so you had to but if you used water um, you could slowly um, loosen it and uh, use the plastic spudger to scrape it off uh, in and around all this stuff. So it's nice and clean now. And then I've also been gluing and patching uh, parts of this is made up of multiple uh, layers of wood. So I've been patching the wood and kind of cleaning it up. The um, the laminate has some uh, bad spots. The finish basically does. I've used some wood cleaner and it's looking okay but not perfect. I'm not sure if I'm going to um, actually refinish it or leave it. It has sort of this very used look. I just wanted to clean it up and glue all the bits back together. Um, if you can see um, back here, I don't know if you can see this. Um, I've covered it, but there's a little bit of asbestos because the um, ballast on the circuit board is the thing that heats up. And uh, so I don't know. I need to find a substitute for the for the um, asbestos. So if you know what's good, uh, a substitute for that. But basically, what I want to do is uh, I don't have the motherboard with me, but or the the main board with the vacuum tubes. But on the back, uh, if you saw the video, lots of wiring mess with capacitors. I want to replace the capacitors and um, look, make sure that all the vacuum tubes are good. There's one missing. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm going to try to get this to work, and then I, I'm going to try to hook my QL up to it, similar to when I hooked up the Amiga to this uh, little TV, because um, this thing will hold two channels to the 13, so we should be able to get that. Uh, it's going to take some time, but yeah, I've gotten really excited about this. Again, this sort of belonged in the family, and um want to fix it up. Now, I'm not really into 40s tech, but... It's a TV, and it really brought back some nostalgia because I, it made me recollect the fact that when I first started with computers, I don't have my ZX81, Timex Sinclair 1000, but that, and then the QL, I actually hooked them to a TV. <clears throat> Both of these to a small, uh, was it 9 or 10 inch? Um, I think I had a... Um, a GE one, a little red one, and then I moved to a uh, Emerson that I had for a long time that I used my QL on. And that little Emerson gave a really good picture for um, um, for RF. And the reason why is it was black and white. So if you had a black and white TV, you actually got a pretty decent RF. Now, if you've seen videos before on, on the QL, uh, if I put this in composite um, monochrome mode, it's a really beautiful clear picture. N no distortions, but with color, it adds a little bit of distortion. However, even in color for this one, um, it, it's a pretty decent picture. I'm going to show that today for RF. Uh, but uh, if you use black and white, you actually get a really good picture where you can do high res and, the, and, and you can easily read it on the eyes. So um, I actually, that's how I used my QL in the late 80s, early 90s, is I had it to, on a black and white TV. Because back then I didn't have monitors. I didn't even know what composite was. Um, didn't even know the QL had output composite. I knew it had RGB, but it, I never looked at the connectors in, to know that it was outputting at least monochrome composite. And I think one of my 13-inch Sony color TVs had a composite input, so I could have hooked it to that. But back then, those 13-inch color TVs were the things you watched TV on because, you know, unless you had money, you didn't have anything bigger than that. And uh, for my computing work, I used a little black and white TV. In fact, I had a, a, a bunch of, I had another black and white TV that was an, a Radio Shack uh, boombox with cassette and a small TV. I used to have that at, at work. This is back when you had analog signals uh, over the years. So yeah, so there's a little bit of nostalgia with computing, for me at least, and uh, TVs. Uh, 
and not monitors or LCD monitors. There's just a lot of work nowadays done to try to get the best possible picture out of your retro computers using either Raspberry Pi or some other means to get an HDMI or, or, or VGA output. And I appreciate that, but at the same time, I think we all grew up um, back in the uh, 80s and early 90s with hooking our machines to a, to a TV instead. <clears throat> what I want to do today is I'm not going to work on this beast. I think I'm done with that. Uh, I also need to fix this, uh, replace some transistors and capacitors because the picture here is not great. Um, if you saw a video, I hooked this to my Amiga 600. What I actually want to do today is compare the Amiga 600 on a TV to the QL on a TV. Now, this is a US QL, so I do have an NTC output, but my Amiga is, is European, so it has a PAL output. But it turns out, um, if you saw the video where I hooked this to uh, a SCART, a monitor with a SCART output, well, that's actually TV from the UK. It's a Samsung 27-inch one. And uh, I can actually use that to hook my Amiga's uh, video RF output to that TV. So that's what I want to do today. I'm going to compare the RF signals of the Amiga to that of my um, QL. Now, I've, I've heard that the Amiga's RF signal isn't as strong uh, as other computers. And, and I know the QL's is, has a nice, strong RF signal. Um, at least the U.S. version, because uh, because that's all I ever used before I started my my retro hobby in 2000. I think 18 or 19 I got into it. But before that, I had put this sort of on the shelf, and when I was using it in the all the way into the late 90s, you, you hooked it to channel three or four, and um, that's how you did your computing. But you could get a really clear picture uh, both on the ZX81 and especially on the QL. And so I want to, yeah, I want to try to do that with the Amiga. Now, an Amiga 600, um, which you bought in 91, did people plug that into a TV or did they actually spend money and buy a monitor as well? Um, again, I had this in 8990, plugged it to TV, but this was also less expensive than Amiga. So I'm curious if people actually used uh, the RF output on the Amiga 600. I know that the 500 didn't have, did it have RF output or did it require an external connector? I know that 1000 required an external uh, mechanism to, to get RF output. So they weren't as um, uh, ubiquitous on all the Amigas as they were on, on some of the Sinclair machines. But yeah, so that's what I want to do today is I'm not going to work on this. I want to um, hook, I'll show you what this looks like on a, a NTSC t uh, LCD TV. And then I'll show what the Amiga looks like on that Samsung, which is a really nice uh, TV, by the way. Just can't get any terrestrial digital signals in the U.S., so it's kind of useless. But I can hook my Amiga up to it to see what kind of picture it gets. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me let me go to that. Okay, I've got this hooked up. Uh, again, this is the Samsung uh, TV that has a SCART connector on the back. I showed it in one of my other videos. It... Um, uh, and I, I finally found the remote for this. And through that, I was able to determine that, um, I was able to find, uh, hmm, which one was it? Right. Audio, uh, do, do the channel, um, setup. And what I discovered in that was that it was, uh, UK and Europe. So it definitely was PAL. So I created a cable uh, on the Amiga. It's, it's kind of a, it's not a coaxial, unfortunately. Um, this side has an RCA jack, and on the back, I um, spliced something together because the the connector on the back of the um, on this TV is not something you can easily or that, that's normal in the U.S. We either have a composite for RCA, or we have our coaxial one, which is a kind that you screw in to the back. Is how our um, TV antennas look. And unfortunately, uh, on the back of this, it has this really weird uh, connector that needs a special plug, and I just don't have it. So I jerry-rigged something, uh, insulated it um, to give it a really good connection, um, and uh, was able to come up with this picture. So here, again, if I kind of hold it, I can improve the picture. So the assumption is that if I had a maybe a, the correct connector and so, some sort of a coaxial uh, cable, shielded, uh, you know, cable, like this one that's on the QL, uh, I might get a better picture. Um, but still, even this is 
still lots of interference. Uh, this cable is about three feet long. Um, the um, I can mute this for now. Um, on the QL, uh, what I did is I have a, an actual uh, coaxial cable to the back of the uh, um, antenna input, but I added a very thin cable about the same length as this. This is even thinner, if you can see it, uh, just to be give it a fair comparison to this, uh, because if, there, if there's interference that's being added in, then uh, this should... Uh, also had that interference in. And you can see on the QL, it's actually a pretty decent uh, cable. Um, let's see what we can do with that. Where is the mouse? There it is. Uh, and that's going to do directory listing. Um, but, and then of course we can do the same thing here. This has an internal um, IDE, SD, to IDE, and this has obviously an SD drive card, but um, certainly much faster. But uh, just wanted to explore, um, you know, the oh, this is getting some interference now. This was doing better. Um, the, yeah. So I think the in both cases the TV tuner sometimes gets involved and tries to get a better picture, but for the most part this is a nice clear picture. Whereas this one, um, if I hold it in a certain way, I can get a decent picture. But again, never as good as on the QL. Oh, there it is. So this is actually a pretty decent picture. Finally, yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure what's going on here. It's it's this is actually not bad. Yeah, that's a good picture. That's almost as good a quality as the QL, um, but w well, currently with the cable in it. So yeah, so this is actually not bad. So I'm not sure. I guess it's it's hitting. So I, I suppose if I had a better cable, perhaps it would be as good. Um, but even on, again on the QL with a crappy cable, I can get this kind of picture as I have a crappy cable on here now. So, but again, I assume if you have a perfect cable, you can get a pretty decent picture um, over uh, RF. Now, does the audio work? That's what I wanted to try. So I'm going to unmute this. I'm going to hold this here. Hopefully that it... Uh, I did find the remote, as I said, and I'm going to unmute this. And when it gets a good picture, the volume also completely disappears, which is nice uh, right here. Okay. Under expansion, I have games. And let's see what the holiday lemmings do. Oh, no, this is the regular lemmings. Um, this is WHD load. Um, it's still, I mean, not a great picture, but it's much better. And yeah, you can really see when it's dark that all the interference that's there. And there's no way to fix. There's no way to fix that. But I think I should already be hearing audio, and I'm not. And of course, with WHD load, this always takes a long time. But um. Yeah, so I suppose um, I just don't have the material to create a better cable. Otherwise, I would have. Um, but uh, all right, let's do player one. And again, this is weird. WHT load will just blink the screen a bunch of times. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, oh, yeah, no, it's really bad. So my arm's getting tired. <laughs> I'll pick that back up once it's starting to play again. Is there a way I can I feel like I'm that's a very that's lots of interference going getting in there, but again for whatever reason if I lift this up I gotta press that right mouse button, there we go. So there is audio, but it's not very really loud. I did. There is a there is a switch um, here that lets you turn audio on and off, and I've turned the audio on. Um, just trying to get a good picture.
Hmm. Oh. I don't know where it's... So here's a better picture, but it's not good audio. So you got to find the sweet spot. But I'm assuming that this should be really loud on the TV. So any idea what's going on? Is, is my RF modulator partially broken? Is, is it not getting... Even if I get a clearer picture... Yep, hard to, <laughs> it's hard to adjust that, unfortunately. Like, sometimes the picture is better, but then the audio is really bad, so. I'm assuming it's, it, it's, it's more in tune when, uh, yep. But I should probably turn the volume down to uh, something more reasonable. Because at 100%, this is probably going to scare someone if it actually does. Now, of course, the QL doesn't have audio. It just has a beeper speaker. So it doesn't have to deal with that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so again, if I try and have a similar setup, I've always discovered that with the QL, even with a, with a bad antenna connection, I get a really cl a clear picture. So there's just something about the RF modulator they're using in there. It's just putting out more power, I guess. Um, there you go. So this, I'm trying to figure out what the best picture is. I had a really good picture a sec when I was in, uh, I'm going to reboot this. There we go. Um, but when I was in workbench, I got a really clear picture at one point. Um, I, th I suppose it also matters what the background and stuff is, but, uh, um, but yeah, so I, I have read that the Amiga's RF modulator just isn't as strong as, as other machines uh, during their time. Obviously, the Amiga was designed for a monitor, so again, I'm just trying to come up with that really great picture that I had. Uh, yeah, so it's just a matter of figuring out the interference patterns. Though. But um, yeah, still, I um, Maybe, and I know the Amiga 500 didn't even have RF, if I remember, or they only had black and white. Or, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I only know about the, um, the Amiga 1000 didn't have RF. It had, you had to have an e extender. I think even for the Amiga 500, I'm not 100% sure. So this is one of the few where they added it, but then I guess they didn't do a great job, or obviously most people didn't get an Amiga 600 to hook to a TV. They, but, Certainly, even my Sega Genesis will do a better job on a TV with a crappy connector. So, uh, yeah, it's a little disappointing that uh, this doesn't do a better job. Uh, or perhaps my RF modulator on the um, Commodore 600 is broken. So uh, my viewers can tell me um, if that's the case or not. But it's a crappier picture than I expected. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I know most of us use converters and, and um, don't really deal with RF anymore, but it was a way of life back in the 80s and 90s. And as a kid, I always was fascinated that you could get a, t a tele television picture on your computer. And back then, most of those little TVs didn't even have um, composite in. So what you had is is this. You know, I'm trying to get a good picture. But, uh, yeah, so... Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep this. I think what I want to do is I have this little um, TV, a a ASTC, which is the uh, digital standard in the U.S., TV tuner that uh, is a USB stick that hooks to my um, Windows PC. And what I should do is go on to the uh, eBay code at UK and see if I can find the equivalent uh, UK version that has a UK uh, tuner. So, so then I don't have to keep a big TV around in case I want to try something to see if I can get the RF picture to work on either a Spectrum or on a Commodore. Again, I know 
you might feel that's weird. Just get the composite signal so much cleaner. But yeah, I mean, there was another video I did where I was actually trying to transmit the signal from here to the actual antenna using um, these little uh, signal boosters. So I think that's kind of cool. So yeah, just just a hobby, right? Um, if I want to get a clear picture, I can go up the uh, Pico to VGA for the QL. Obviously, there's more options on the Amiga to get the beautiful signal out, even a HDMI option where you can use a Raspberry Pi. But I do like machines that have more than single options. So I like that this has RF, composite, RGB, same with the QL. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. But uh, um, it just kind of brings me back to the, um, you know, back to the 80s and 90s when I was using computers and basically just had a black and white monitor. So, all right. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up today for this TV extravaganza. And uh, let me know what you think. Um, uh, TV's uh, RF out thing of the past, not really part of the retro world or, uh, you know, uh, should, should we explore that more? All right. All right. So I'm going to end here. Thanks for joining me and um, I'll see you next time.